His Detroit Lions are 5-1 and one for back-to-back -back years for the first time since the team moved to Detroit in 1934. But he's marathoning. He's not sprinting. He's the head coach of the Detroit Lions. He's Dan Campbell back here in the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Coach? I, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Um, you know, business as usual. On to the next one. I know. I know. But uh, we in the media, we always we, – we can't turn the page so quickly. Um, so – what what do you make of your five and one start so far, Dan? Yeah, I uh, I think we're right on pace. Um, you know, there's always going to be ebbs and flows to a season. Um, you know, we we hit a, hit a little rough patch. You know, after uh, we won the opener and got in a dog fight with Tampa, couldn't quite overcome uh, a couple of errors. One of them being my own, and um, and so we dropped that one. But we learned from it. We got better and. And uh, you just take it as it comes, man. And uh, and I, I love where we're at right now, and I love where our team's at. Your quarterback's on a heater. Uh, I mean, and, and I think I might be um, understating it right now. So what what do you see from Jared Goff right now compared to other quarterbacks you've seen on heaters in your career as a player or a coach, Dan? I mean, he's just – he's playing at a high level. Look, I was fortunate to be around Drew Brees uh, as a player – but as a coach, you know, for, for a combination of six years and, and uh, you know, when you're around uh, that type of, of player, it's rare. And to see the professionalism, the work that goes into it, the process, um, the competitiveness, and, and there's things about golf that remind me of, of him. And, you know, he's, he just, man, he's got a workman's attitude. He's blue collar in that way. Um, a quiet confidence. He doesn't get frazzled. He's tough. He's just, man, he's seeing it. And because of that, we put a lot on him. Ben Johnson's done a hell of a job. Ben, Ben asked a lot of him. And, uh, you know, we just, that Minnesota game now that the defense does a lot and they give you a lot of different looks. And if your quarterback can't handle it, you're going to struggle against them. So our guys playing at a high level. Um, I'm really not surprised just because I know what he's put into it and he's an accurate passer and uh, he's a dude, man. He's one of those guys. So we're fortunate to have him and uh, sky's the limit for him. So is his, his accuracy, is that Breeze like to you? What What is Breeze like to you when you're watching Jared right now? Yeah, I think it's the I think it's the accuracy, man. I think it's the ability to process what the defense is doing to you and in a split second uh to be able to make an accurate throw, you know, and and I think what what you know, to be able to um to be able to I said this the other day, the what what certain players have in their head and what they've got in their heart is what separates guys in this league and um and so there's a lot of of uh, players that have ability but when you start talking about the quarterback position um man if you don't have it up there and you don't have that drive and that competitiveness and that spirit man you'll break you'll crumble you can't do it it's too much pressure there's too much put on you and our guy's got that he's a winner man that's the bottom line your quarterback the first description of a good quarterback is a guy who can win and this guy's a winner so um I'm glad we got him. Yeah, and and when you did get him, I mean, this is when you arrived in Detroit too, Dan, you know, and your famous speech uh, that you gave when you first arrived talking about how this team was going to mirror the city's identity. It's kind of crazy that it's a kid from Northern California, right, who, who does do exactly that at the most important face-forward position in this town at the quarterback spot. And I'm wondering what you said to him when you first – arrived there and he first arrived there and a lot of people thought he was just being cast off by the Rams to Detroit where he would just kind of have a little bit of a way station for you and him well look, first of all I know he's a California kid but that you know where he comes from and his folks uh his dad I mean he he comes from blue collar roots now I mean so it's not like he's you know uh he had a silver spoon in his mouth um so he he's had to earn what he's gotten he's had to work for it um but, but here's what I, I said this from day one. I said it when Brad talked about acquiring him, I was all for it. And here's why, because if you want to know my first experience with Jared Goff was standing on the opposite sidelines for three years in a row uh, and watching one of the top defenses I've ever been a part of as a coach or a player, which is new Orleans saints. 
um, give that guy fits and watch him get hit and get up, uh, make another accurate throw on the money, get hit, get up, make another accurate throw. NFC Championship game at the Superdome just freaking brings that team back and ends up, you know, um, defeating us. And I just saw the environment, the the type of pressure that he was under, and just thinking, this guy won't break. And, and I would have swore he would have broke. I'm just like, this guy can't handle this. And I don't know many quarterbacks that could. And uh, and it was impressive, man. And that the, that's the type of thing that sticks in your memory. And you don't forget those moments. And you're like, I don't know this guy, but I know enough sitting here watching on the sideline that – this guy has found a way to win and he just won't give up and he just keeps coming back for more. And there's a quiet competitiveness about him that, um, that man, you, you want that type of guy on your team. So you're saying if he's a wine drinker, he drinks it straight from the bottle. Is that what you're saying coach? Oh, I'm sure he has at one point in his life. <laughs> when did you do that? I heard this whole exchange yesterday. Oh, did... I'm just throwing stuff out. I mean, <laughs> I, I, uh, it's happened before. I wouldn't say I, I that's something I major in. But... <laughs> red or anyway. white? Was it a red or a white that you drank? It was red. From? Okay. It was red. That's a good one. Yeah. Okay. I, I approve that message then. I approve it. Dan Campbell here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. How's my guy Hutch doing? How's Aiden Hutchinson doing right now? He, listen, he's doing all right. And um, he's doing all right. You know, and he's still, you know, I, that, that's tough, man. When you're playing at a high level like he is and um, he's, you know, one of the one of the outstanding players in this league um, on a really good year, having a really good year. And and, it, and that type of injury happens. It's tough. It's tough to process. It's tough to process the injury itself. You know, how bad is this? What is this? What, am I going to be able to come back? What am I going to look like when I come back? Can I come back this year? Is it next year? And then you start thinking about, man, the year I was having and, you know, the aspirations our team had. And it's a lot. And it takes a while. Um, you know, it takes a while to get through that and, and, and just kind of start finding your finding your way back. But I would say he's in good spirits. You know, Hutch, he, he doesn't, if he's down, he doesn't stay down long. And, uh, said it before if anybody's going to come back better than before it'll be this guy i mean so, he's a workaholic he'll grind on it he'll do whatever it takes to come back better than he was and um and so that's why I've, i i feel good about where he's going to be when it's all said and done so it's not going to be long we talked about this about a week ago he's going to start getting an itch in about a month i i can already, he's going to start feeling better it's going to start healing up and i just i can see it so he's hanging in there he's doing well when do you think you might be able to get him back around the team if uh, not be cleared to even be on, on the sideline? Obviously, it's dicey with the injury he had to be around guys who might fly out of bounds. But what do you think on that front? Just get Yeah, I mean, it's hard to say. Look, anytime he wants to be around when he feels right and we do feel like uh, he's in a position where he, he doesn't get wiped out or something on the sideline, he knows he's wanted here. Um so we'll, we'll figure that out. If we have to put him in a cage off to the side, we'll do that. <laughs> he might say yes to that. He actually he might. <laughs> he, he might do that. I, and, you know, obviously that that was um, quite, a, quite a downer, but you were able, to, to say the least, but you were able to come back and, and win that game, and you, you your team has been – um, on, on a, a very nice roll right now. And in that in that game, um, when you're taking on, on Dallas, a lot was made about some of the play calling and how you had a whole bunch of tackle-eligible plays settled for that game. And did was that intentional? Were you going into that game and saying, we're going to run a bunch of plays with some uh, formations similar to the ones that, that everyone was talking about because of the way you, you did not win the last time you were in Dallas? Was that intentional? Well, it, one of them was the fact that, you know, we didn't get Taylor Decker a score. We went into Dallas in 2023 saying we're going to get Taylor Decker a touchdown. It didn't happen. So 2024, we got to make up for it. And it didn't work out. Um, we've been cooking the one with Sewell for a while. We felt like that was the week to do it. I told the team before uh, we went in that game, we were going to use everything we had. And we weren't saving anything. And uh, and so I we kept that promise. Um, and man, we're, we're playing to win. And that's, that's really the bottom line. And, you know, what do you think that's, 
intentionally sending a message to your team, I, I imagine. Is that what you're doing? You're, you're sending a message to your team that you're plugged into the sort of stuff that they know what they would find fun, but is also a winning strategy? Uh, uh, I'm just wondering, trying to get into your, your game of chess that you play as the HC of the Detroit Lions, Dan. Yeah, well, I think the don't you want to be predictably unpredictable? Isn't that the whole point of all this? So I don't know if I want to give you insight into my head. I'm not even sure I could tell you what's in there. Um, <laughs> no, I, I think, uh, you know, look, the, our guys, man, we, we don't just throw this stuff up against the wall. I know it looks like it at times. And when they don't work, it does. It sure looks like that. But when we have these ideas, Ben does a great job and, and the offensive staff and, and we talk about it and, you know, what do you think? Is this the week? I said, yeah, this is the week. Let's do it. And and so we'll work it. And if it feels right, we use it. If not, we save it for the next week. And if it's not ready, then we'll save it for two weeks after that. But we continue to work it every week until it feels right and we feel like we can handle any look. And and so when you go in saying you're going to use it, and that, that to me, for the most part, you, I'm not always 100% that way. But if I promise the team, I'm going to do something, we're going to do it. So if I tell them we're using everything, we're going to use it. And cause I, I just, I don't know, man, I, I take that. That means something to me. And uh, it is what it is. Just want to ask you about a couple Alabama players on your team in the few minutes I have left with you, Dan Campbell of the Detroit lions here on the rich Eisen show reports in my world are that Jamison Williams is facing a two game suspension. I know uh, uh, as you and I are talking right now, you can't talk about, it but what what can you tell me that you do know about Jamison Williams right now well I, I do know that um that we are prepared to not have him for the next two games and um and the guys that we that we have here are, are going to be ready to roll and they've been here guys we trust Khalif Raymond Alan Ross St. Brown Tim Patrick Alan Robinson um you know and and then we got Gibbs, we got Montgomery, we got Laporta. I mean, so we'll, we'll, we'll be just fine here. Next guy will step up, and uh, and we'll be good to go. Yeah, I know Gibbs wasn't the other Alabama guy I was referring to. The other one is Brian Branch, man. I mean, what did you see in him that we're seeing in him right now, Dan? Well, Brad and I both, man, when he was coming out, we fell in love with him immediately and it, it, because the way he plays the game. I mean, he's a football player. He's instinctive. He's tough. And, you know, we went through all <laughs> – we went through his whole season. We're like, okay, did anybody see a missed tackle in there? We couldn't find a missed tackle in, in his college tape. And the guy is as sure a tackler as you're going to find. Uh, he's a ball guy. And so we that's what we saw. We saw a guy who we felt like could impact the game. And um, – and AG's done a hell of a job with him. He really, he's really thriving at the safety position for us. And Nickel, he he was outstanding last year at Nickel. But we always talked about, man, if we could put him at safety and really let him go in our defense, he could really, really thrive because you have a little bit of freedom. You know, there's there's things that that um, that you're allowed to do. Use your instincts, play ball within the structure of the defense, but. And he's just grown every week. He's gotten better and better and better. And he's on terror right now. So the sky's the limit for, for Brian branch. And, and again, just, you have so many of these guys that, that just um, mirror what appears to be the style you want to have and the city as well. I mean, Montgomery too. I mean, I, I, he, he is unbelievable right now. And I'm, I'm wondering what you, you saw in him from, from, Chicago to say this is the guy because obviously when you get a a a nice shiny object like Jameer Gibbs you're going to want to try and give him the ball 30 times but you're sticking with Montgomery and for good reason Dan well I said this before when you when you go against Montgomery you know it was fortunate or unfortunate however you want to look at it to have to go against him in the division so you know you get a couple of years of going against that guy and I remember all four times we played him I'd come into AG and I said, I know what they've got over there. But I said, this guy, this guy, 32, he was 32 at the time in Chicago. I said, this guy worries me. This is a guy we have to account for. We cannot let this guy beat us. And it was because of his vision. He's strong. He's compacted, strong runner, and he's aggressive, man. The way he he runs the ball, the way you want an RB to run the ball, man. And, and, uh, He's, he runs with attitude and fight and finish and everything's about 
uh, his demeanor, right? Like he he wants to try to embarrass you. He, he wants to drive you into the ground. Um, and he's the one who's carrying the ball. So like to me, when you have a ball carrier that way, it inspires people around you. It, it inspires your blockers, right? It inspires the O-line, the receivers, the everybody. And so, um, so that was my first look at him was in the division. And I said, man, it, that guy right there. And you always said, well, you see some of these guys sometimes that you have to go play against. And uh, every once in a while, you're like, man, what would he look like with us? Um, and we were fortunate to be able to get him. It actually worked out. Last one for you. I'm going to take a stab at this one, thinking that you will have a good answer here. Uh, obviously, you coached with Sean Payton. Uh, you were one of the first free agent signings when Bill Parcells showed up in Dallas. You got a good Parcells story? that is informs maybe who you are as a coach or anything like that. You got a little parcels in you, Dan Campbell. Um, man, I got a million parcel stories. Um, you know, there's man, I mean, between both of them and, and there's so much a shine that, that is himself, but also that as well that you take. Um, no, I mean, look, the only thing here, here's this sums up bill. That's why I love bill. Okay. I'm a free agent. It's not even a funny story. I don't know why I'm, I'm saying this. It's, right. it's uh, no, but I'm a free agent. I go to Dallas, and that was because of Sean. Sean vouched for me, and I spent all my career, most of my career, eight out of the 11 years uh, as a player with, with Sean Payton, and then another five as a coach. So my career is because of Sean Payton. Uh, but but Bill, so he vouches for me. I go, and uh, and so I'm like, man, I'm free agent. I'm like, need a tight end. I'm going to be a starter. You know, I'm going to be a star. I'm going to go to Dallas and start. Mm. And Bill tells me straight up, I'm just telling you right now. He goes, we really like you, man. You fit here. There's a place for you, but you're a backup. All right. You're not a starter and you're not going to get starter money. And wow. we want you, we want you, you know, and I mean, it was straight to the point. And I remember I was so heated, you know, <laughs> but it was almost that, you know what? Yeah. I will come here and sign as a backup just to prove you wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is ridiculous right it's like a mind trick um but bill was the best man uh you you loved him or you hated him i loved him and uh he uh he he is one of these unique rare coaches in this league like sean payton that you're man i'm fortunate to be around i was fortunate to be around some great coaches and uh i've tried to take the best of of all of them but I'm sure you are you are you that brutally honest with your players because he was that way with you. I mean, is that sort of you picked I try up to be, on? Yeah. yeah, I try. I don't ever. I don't ever want to lie to my players, and it may hurt and it may sting, but I want him. I want him to know the truth because it's not fair to sit there and tell somebody you're doing good, you're doing good, and then you cut them, or you're doing good, you're doing good, and then they're not playing. And so you just tell them, man, rip the bandaid off and let them yeah. know. And they may not like it, but they'll respect it. I'll tell you my before I let you go. My favorite Parcel story I heard was from Paul Tagliabue when I first took over uh, with NFL Network about twenty something years ago. Tagliabue said he was standing at midfield of a practice with the Jets when Parcells was there, and Parcells there was a defensive line um, drill going on at the goal line, fifty yards away, and Parcells is getting on a bunch of guys, and he turns to Bill and he goes, "Bill, we're the same age. I can't see five yards down the field. How can you see everything going on down there?" And he reaches in his he reaches into his pocket, takes out a list of ten names. He goes, "I had a list of ten guys that I knew I was going to get on in practice today. I'm not, number three. Stick around. I got seven more to go." <laughs> That's coach. He's the best man. That's one of my favorite <laughs> stories I've picked up in 20 years doing this gig. Uh, Dan, thanks for the time. Greatly appreciate it. Let's do this uh, whenever whenever uh, you're up for it, and I I call. But so I appreciate it. Thanks. All right. Sounds good. I appreciate it. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.